Hey, I'm Mark the Clive Lowe, and I'm here to share my process, my rig, and how I like to marry the worlds of digital, analog, man and machine all together. So this whole rig, it looks pretty complex, but I mean, to me it's very simple. I guess everyone says that about their own rig. The whole thing is running through Ableton, but primarily I'm going to be using Machine, Native Instruments Machine, for my looping, or my MIDI looping, basically. I've got you know, two Chaos pads running here. I've got two mapped USB controllers. I've got a Roland Juno 6 for the old school. I've got a Nord Piano 3, which is basically substituting my piano slash Rhodes. A USB keyboard controller hooked up into the machine. Little delay pedal here running on the Nord. I'm running everything through a Focusrite interface. And then all the master going through the mixer over there. Also the iPad running um, touchable iOS. So as far as clock goes, everything here is locked up. Not everything. Obviously, the Nord here is not locked to the clock. The Juno over here is not locked to any clock. And if I had a piano or a Rhodes or a clavinet or the band, obviously that's all organic. But the, all this information here is clocked. So Ableton is running the master. Machine is in slave mode. The chaos pads are both receiving MIDI. So they're locked into the same clock. The other key point is I'm running click. You know, you can't, there's no way to do this in this particular context without click. If I was using a loop pedal where I'm tapping the start and tapping the end, then you get that loop kind of distance mapped out by your actual tap. But in this case, I'm running click to my ear. If I'm playing with uh, the band, I'm also sending that click to the drummer. I grew up playing piano as my first instrument. So for me, the piano is pretty much where it all starts. What I like to do with a piano is I like to have this running through one of the chaos pads so I can immediately run effects on the piano. Now the chaos pad is it's a very simple tactile effects interface and very basic sampler. So as I play something, I can touch the chaos pad and in this case a delay run effects on there. The chaos pad has two axes, an X and a Y, so wherever I move my finger, you're getting a a change. So for example, um, with the delay, that's changing both the mix and the delay rate. Um, there's a whole lot of different effects you can run on here. I like this kind of granulator. There's a little a, a kind of a looper chopper. At the same time, I can also sample on the Chaos Pad. It's a really rudimentary sampler, which I like about it. I mean, you can sample in quarter notes, you can sample one, two, four, eight, or 16 quarter notes. There's only four channels. So it's kind of like an old four track recorder. If I want to sample three times and keep going, I'll bounce all those down to the fourth channel, and then that clears up the banks. So now that's sampled into the Chaos Pad here. I can run filters on there. Got a high pass filter, delays, the granulator. So all those effects that I was playing in real time, I can then apply it to the sample. So if I want to start sculpting that and getting some texture out of it, I can resample it with different effects. So now it's resampled with the reverb. I can lay another effect on top of that. And then I can end up with something which is like, you know, a whole, a whole world apart from where I started off. 
So for me, this becomes a really cool tool to use for basically creating textures and colors. And that just gives me a sound bed I can then play on top of. But that's, that's the basic relationship between how I think of the piano and the chaos pad. When I'm playing with the band, I can have it set up with anyone in the band routed, routed through the mixer, so I could sample the vocalist or the sax player or the trumpet player or the drummer through the chaos pad and start to manipulate that sound as well. So that the heart of the whole system, when everything's up and running, is pretty much machine. So each, each pad bank is set up with 16 sounds. I've got some kicks, snares, different snares, percussion. And then I have one pad, one pad bank, which is all soft synths. Basses, some leads, some pads, and so forth. With the USB keyboard plugged into the computer, running machine, whatever pad is selected on machine will be mapped to the keyboard immediately. So for example, here's a lead. That's selected now. So really with just these two alone, I've got quite a lot of power where I can sequence melodically and rhythmically using the pads and the keys at the same time. So here's the Novation Launch Control XL. I have everything in machine grouped. So for example, all my kick drums All my snares are on here, and so forth. So essentially I've got this set up like an, like an analog mixer, you know, everything's grouped, I've got immediate control over it. Because I'm programming, effectively producing on the fly, I need to be able to mix on the fly. Then I have the, 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 the knob set up very simply. So I have a low pass, I have a high pass, and I have a universal effects. So that effects is basically sending out A and B of Ableton to a reverb and a delay. So that's universal across all of these. So for example, if we're looking at the basses channel, so that gives me that kind of basic control over all the sounds within groups. Basically I have this keyboard hooked up to artillery as a beat chopper, so whatever sound I have running through Ableton or in Ableton 
will get affected by this. So if we play that beat again, Whereas the high pass and low pass here only affect the drums and bass, the high pass and low pass here affect everything. There's also resonance here. So those give me a little more control as far as shaping all the music goes as well. The third pair here, I've got LFOs. My last pair here I've got set up so I can actually, I can resample what's happening within Ableton and these are master filters there. So if I show you that quickly. On Touchable I'm going to basically grab that here. Now what we're hearing is the resample version. So I've got a high pass and a low pass over that resample version. But what's cool about this is it frees up machine. So machine, right now nothing is playing. Now that percussion I just programmed is here on A on the crossfade, the resampling is on B, and I can get a blend. So the other way I like to resample is in the chaos pad. So for example, it's, just, it's very similar to what I was doing sampling into Ableton, but it just means that there's different parameters I can play with and different, ver different variations. So if I sample, you know, we increase the tempo, um, now I'm going to sample it off into the chaos pad and build on top of that. At this point, I've basically got the uh, the roads, which is in Ableton. I filtered that that up a bit, so it's kind of more in the background. The sampled loop, which is in the chaos pad. I was writing the fader down, just get it more in the mix. And then I program new drums on top of that. What I love about the setup with the chaos pads is that in Ableton, if I resample something and push the tempo up or down, then the pitch is going to stay consistent, which is great. It's very useful. But I love it when the pitch doesn't stay consistent. So the chaos pads, the way they react to tempo, is much more like a, like a turntable. So for me, it's not about finding the sample through a record collection. It's about, you know, finding the sample out of my own performance process. You know, what, what we heard just now, that couldn't have happened without the previous two or three musical ideas that led to this moment. 
a, a big premise for this for, in sharing this for me is not like, hey, you know, do it like this. There's a million ways to do this. And I think one of the great things about technology now is how you can create this hybrid between your own instrument and the tech and approach it different ways. I think everyone's got a different way they want to do it and a different outcome they want to achieve. But yeah, like I said, hopefully this is inspiring in some way. Um, feel free to follow me on social media, check out my own music. You can find me on mdcl.tv, touring around the world, playing wherever I can. Hopefully see you along the way. Thank you very much.